people engage in business activity, sometimes they're successful, uh, they engage in trade, they make a profit, and then what happens? Government comes along with hand apps. Oi, we want some of that. Uh, they've been doing this since the dawn of time. Kings used to charge people for the privilege of operating on a quota of their land. Whatever it is that can be taxed has been taxed at some stage. When government takes taxation, they're taking away part of the proceeds. They're making the economic activity less attractive. They're making it generate less wealth. Now, fair enough, people say, but taxation is justified because we have to pay for defence forces, we have to pay for um, uh, bridges, we have to pay for a monarchy, uh, courts of justice, so we need to take some taxation. Ah, yes. But in taking some taxation, do bear in mind, it's a trade-off. Adam Smith, the great Scottish economist, who lent his name to the Adam Smith Institute, said there were four basic canons of taxation. If you're going to have to tax, right, make sure the cost of collection is low in proportion to the revenue it yields, number one. Two, make sure that the liability, your, your, how much tax you owe and when it's due to be paid, must be known in advance, it must be public. Because if you allow tax inspectors to exercise discretion, Money will line palms and corruption will take place. Third, he said, the method and the timing of payment must be convenient to the payer. So, for example, if you're going to tax rental properties, uh, tax them at the time when the rent is due in, because then the guy's got some money to pay it with. Uh, and, and fourthly, uh, he, he said, um, fundamentally, uh, taxation must be levied according to the ability to pay. Uh, the famous American bank robber, Willie Sutton, was once asked, why do you rob banks? We said, oh, that's where the money is. Yes, exactly. Why do you tax the rich? Because that's where the money is. The thing to remember about taxation is that it always alters behaviour. All over Britain, you can see old buildings that have got windows bricked up. And the reason is that William III introduced a window tax. And he taxed people according to the number of windows in their houses. Fewer than 10 windows, no tax. But if you had more than 20, wow, you moved on to a really high rate. And so people responded by bricking up windows. Uh, in Scotland, when this was introduced later by Prime Minister Pitt, uh, people resorted to the much cheaper device of painting their windows black. And the aim was to avoid the tax. Now, it was not the intention of the tax authorities to make people brick up windows. Their intention was to raise money. They were thwarted by those changes in behaviour. There's one thing you have to take account of when you're levying taxes, and that is mobility. See, when taxes were mostly levied on land, when we had an agricultural economy. Land is not mobile. Once you start taxing talent, you start taxing people on their skills, do remember that people are very mobile. People might decide to go and live in another country rather than pay your high rates of tax. And if your high rates make them move, you're losing the wealth-creating process that they were generating. I think you could add a fifth canon of taxation. You, Smith didn't, but you could say you should never levy a tax if the damage it does to the economy is out of all proportion to the revenue it yields. Business activity, commercial activity, is the goose that lays the golden eggs. And if you're careful, you can take a few of those eggs and fund your activities. What you don't do with that goose is to clip its wings, bind its feet and wring its neck, because then there won't be any more golden eggs. Madsen Perry attempted to prove once again that economics is fun.